What up, world? Welcome to another episode of World of Freedom. Um, today, I'm going to be going over part two um, of the podcast episode that I recently did. Um, this is with uh, Josephine Wright. Um, this is going to be um, the concluding um, of her case, you know, for the fight for her land. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, she did uh, pass away in January of this year. Um, but I am going to cover, um, you know, what actually happened, you know, in the remainder um, of her story. OK. All right. So I am going to go over this article. This article was uh, released on March 19th of this year. Um, and it, uh, the title is South Carolina Woman uh, Posthumously Wins Settlement Over Black Ancestral Land and this was um, posted by The Guardian, okay? So Josephine Wright, a Hilton Head Island resident who died this year, age 94, spent her last days fighting to protect her family's ancestral South Carolina home from being taken by developers. Now, two months after her death, Wright's fight is finally over. Bailey Point Investment, the construction company that was vying for her land, has settled with the Wright. Uh, with Wright's family members after it initially sued for ownership early last year. The settlement concedes that the Wright family owns the property in the middle of Bailey Point's planned 29-acre neighborhood, according to South Carolina Public Radio. The company cannot contact the Wright family about purchasing the land, and there will be a privacy fence erected between the Wright's family land and the new construction. Okay. All right, so again, they were planning 29-acre uh, neighborhood, um, and they're building a fence between the Wrights family land and the new construction. Okay. Well, that's, that's better, you know, um, that they're at least still giving the family, you know, some privacy um, by building that fence. Right story of an elderly woman pushing back against a Dickin or Dickinson development company captivated national audiences and spurred an outcry from people such as Tyler Perry, uh, as you can see in the picture, who promised to build right a new house on the property and Snoop Dogg and Kyrie Irving, who we talked about in the last video, who donated 10,000 and 40,000 came from Kyrie, respectively. And GoFundMe for Wright reached more than $350,000. Wright, who was survived by four children, 40 grandchildren, dozens of great and great great grandchildren, and her late husband, Samuel Wright Jr., moved from New York City to Hill Hair Island some 30 years ago, seeking a place of peace and tranquility. Jonesville, the neighborhood into which they moved, was named after Caesar Jones a black Civil War veteran and formerly enslaved man who had bought property in the area. Immediately after the war, Wright Jr.'s family, who were Gullah Geechee, has owned 1.8 acres of land on the island since around that time. Following the Civil War, Gullah Geechee people living on Hilton Head owned the majority of the land, right? And that's what I was saying. Crazy part is, you know, People like her, like Miss Wright, is getting kicked off the land when the majority of that land was passed down to descendants of slaves. You know, people who had, you know, after the Civil War, you know, who got, you know, freedom and was actually given that land, they're actually taking that back. You know, so again, that's just another form of gentrification. All right. Yeah. Now Hilton Head Island is about 77% white. Gullah Geechee land ownership on Hilton Head Island has decreased by 70% since 1995, according to Greenville News. With descendants owning just 8% of the island's total residential acreage in 2021. Wow. All right. So from, wow, 1995. Wow, to 2021. Wow, that's a major decrease. In 2022, Bailey Point received town uh, approval, and that town approval was to build a new neighborhood with 147 housing units, which is around Wright's property. The company 
proposition right to buy her land, but she refused last February. It filed a lawsuit against her, alleging that Wright's home encroached on its land. The town refused to issue a certificate of compliance to Bailey Point until it was reached in agreement um, with Wright. After refusing to sell, Wright says she experienced bullying, intimidation, and harassment tactics from the company, such as littering on her home and property and the cutting of her shrubs. She said that the company even tried to go around by uh, negotiating with other family members. And that's sneaky right there. But that's what they do, though. You know what I mean? Um, especially when it comes to heirs property. Um, if this was a case of heirs property, they can contact one of the heirs, even if all the other heirs don't want to sell. But one of the heirs do want to sell. Um, they could basically force the sale of that property. So a lot of people are are unaware of heirs' property, and your family, you know, may even be affected by heirs' property um, or have been. Um, all right, they want this whole thing right. Told the island packet last year. I made a little joke. I said to one of my children, "Maybe I better watch where I'm going. Who knows what could happen to a little old lady." And actually, I actually know someone else um, that I was actually, you know, getting some of their property under contract. And basically, um, where they currently live, they live around a bunch of new developments. Um, so basically, um, they had plenty of offers, you know, from companies or development companies that were building around them to buy their land. Right. And for what they were offering them, you know, it wasn't worth how much they were actually going to make for taking the home and redeveloping the land, you know, and potentially knocking it down, you know, to do the new development. So, you know, you know, this is very common. All right. In the place of historic Gullah Geechee homes, ancestral sites and sacred spaces such as burial grounds or now golf courses, condos and country clubs, most of which are frequented or, um, Held by wealthy white retirees, Black Hill and Head residents have long tried to fight the ongoing gentrification and takeover of their land, which began in earnest in 1957 with the opening of Sea Pines, a 5,200 acre gated community which oversees four golf courses. All right. So, Wright spent the last year of her life on the offensive, fighting heartily to maintain her home. Now, her family inherits her land but not the battle to keep it. Under the newly created Josephine Wright Foundation, her relatives plan to help others in similar situations, okay? So, again, there have been many families that have been affected, you know, by things like this, right? By these type of cases. And Josephine, God rest her soul, but she fought to the end. Her and her family fought to the end. She made noise. She was in the media, right? And by her doing that, it garnered attention from celebrities. Again, you got Tyler Perry. You got Kyrie Irving. You got Snoop Dogg, right? She garnered all this attention from celebrities, right, who actually helped blow her story up more and push it into the mainstream media. And by them doing that, you know, she had leverage. You know, when she went to court, and she fought the case and different things like that. And it just made that company, um, that development company, look bad. And ultimately, she gained public sympathy because, again, it is a messed up situation. And because she gained public sympathy, again, that her that helped her win her case, right? So she ended up winning her case, you know, um, they ended up putting the fence in between her yard and the development projects. Um yeah, and unfortunately, even though she passed away in January, you know, her family, you know, has still been able to keep that land. Hopefully they do. Hopefully, you know, they don't sell it, especially now. It's definitely heirs' property because um, she does have a lot of kids and grandkids and different things like that. And like I said, it only takes one of them to decide, hey, we want to sell. And with heirs' property, that can actually force to sell of the entire property um, and then they will end up losing it. So hopefully, you know, it won't be a situation in terms of that happening, 
but again, you never know. So um, for this particular case that we dissected, you know, it was actually a pretty decent outcome. And I say all this to say, too, all it takes is for victims of situations like this, especially because I'm I'm deep diving and learning even more and more about these type of situations. All you got to do is just stand up for yourself, just like Miss Wright did. You know what I mean? And try to get that media, try to get that attention on your side as well. You know what I mean? Because that's actually um, what's going to help in terms of you fighting your case as well. You know, so um, overall, um, great turnout. Um, yeah. So what I need y'all to do is I need y'all to comment, comment what you think about this video, comment any feedback, um, like, subscribe. But you guys liking and subscribing, it actually helps push this video up YouTube's um, algorithm. And it's also, you know, helps us be able to reach more people and for more people to find out stories like this, right? And by them finding out stories like this, again, it could